Hey guys, welcome to College United Engineering Bongan Gumele. So today we'll be doing a uh, sequence six, okay? And then um, I'm going to read you the statement for sequence six. Okay, this statement says that when uh, the start button is pressed, motor one and motor two must start rotating automatically. And then 10 seconds after motor one and motor two has started, your motor one must stop rotating. And then 10 seconds after motor one has stopped rotating, your motor two must also stop. Okay, so this is the control circuit. I've got my start button and my stop button. But if you can check my stop button, I've 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 i linked to retainers. This is a retainer for KM1 and retainer for KM2. Then I've got uh, two timers, a delay off timer and a delay on timer, KM2 and KM1. Okay. And then I've got uh, the normal open for timer one and normally, you know, the normal close for timer one and a normal open for timer two. Okay. And I've got a normal open here of KM1. Okay. Let me just go online and then we get to the business of the day. Okay, so the statement says that when we press the start button, both motors must rotate. Okay, so let me press this uh, start button. Mm. Okay, start button is pressed. We see that both motors are rotating at the same time. But remember, all the timers now are energized. Okay. So we can see motor one and motor two that are rotating. Then after 10 seconds, you want your motor one to stop rotating. You can see that timer one is busy counting. Eh? After it's finished, you will see that your motor one, which is your KM1, will stop. Okay, and immediately your motor one has stopped. But now after 10 seconds, motor one has stopped rotating. We want our motor two to stop also. You see the Delay of timer is busy counting now. You see here, it's an open link to show that your delay of timer start counting after you have removed power from it. Okay, and we'll see this KM2 will become de-energized and then your motor will stop rotating. So it's a matter of time and yes. So it means that we did what the statement wanted us to do. So let me show you what I did. Okay, first of all, we want both timers to energize. Uh, we want both uh, motors to rotate when the start button is pressed. So this is KM1 and KM2. Immediately when you press the start button, power will flow through here. This is a normally close for timer one. So this is the coil. So it means that after 10 seconds, this one will become a normally open. So it will still continue to run your KM1 until after uh, 10 seconds so here we've got a normal open but how does that how is that possible that our km2 receive power and uh, your motor 2 rotates it's because of this is a delay of timer so this is a normal open of a delay of timer remember immediately when you put power on a delay of timer it changes its contact immediately so normally open will become a normal close and then after you de-energize this delay of timer and then it will start to count and then it goes back to the original position which is a normal open so immediately when you press the start button your km1 is going to energize and then this normal open will become a normal close so that you can energize your timer two okay and when your timer two is energized this normally open of timer two it will become a normally closed and when it's a normally closed now your km2 will be able to start rotating and when your uh, KM2 starts rotating, it means that both motors now are, are running. Okay, so let me press the start button again. I'm press, I just press the start button. We see that immediately your KM1 and your KM2, they energized. And immediately this one is a now a normally closed, which means that your timer 2 is energized. And when your timer 2 is energized, this normally open is now a normally closed. Okay. So you see your time one is counting, but your time two is not counting. It will wait until it's de-energized. Let's wait for it. Let's wait for time two to be de-energized. You see time two is being de-energized and now it's beginning to count. It will never count unless if it's de-energized. So now when it's still counting, you want to stop 
uh, your Moto 2. So we are going to wait until here yeah, there's an open loop. Yeah, when there's an open loop, that's when we'll we'll be able to make our timer. Uh, I will make our KM2 to energize. Let's wait and you see, that's it. So the most important thing for you to understand is that a delay of timer, it works in such a way that when you put power on it, it, it will change contacts immediately. So when we put power here, this one will become a normally closed. But then when you remove power or when you de-energize it, it starts to count. And then when it starts to count, that's when this one will change contacts again. So for the sake of understanding, I will just start the process and I will let you see how the process goes. Start button is pressed. So just look at how the circuit is going. I'm not pressing anything. Everything is happening automatically. So the statement says that when you press the start button, both Moto 1 and Moto 2 must start rotating. And then 10 seconds after both motors are rotating, your Moto 1 must stop rotating. And then 10 seconds after your Moto 1 has stopped rotating, uh, that's, that's when your Moto 2 also must stop uh, to rotate. Yeah, let me just verify the statement if I'm speaking correctly. So we are saying that when you press the start button, both motors must start rotating. Then after 10 seconds, your Moto 1 must stop rotating. And after 10 seconds, your Moto 1 has stopped rotating. Then your Moto 2 must also stop rotating. And that's it. And then let's meet on the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the videos. Shop, shop.